Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 2 Samuel chapter 15 In the course of time, Absalom provided himself with a chariot and horses with 50 men to run ahead of him. He would get up early and stand by the side of the road leading to the city gate. Whenever anyone came with a complaint to be placed before the king for a decision, Absalom would call out to him, What town are you from? He would answer, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your claims are valid and proper, but there's no representative of the king to hear you. And Absalom would add, If only I were appointed judge in the land, then everyone who has a complaint or a case could come to me, and I would see that they receive justice. Also, whenever anyone approached him to bow down before him, Absalom would reach out his hand, taking hold of him and kissing him. Absalom behaved in this way toward all the Israelites who came to the king asking for justice, and so he stole the hearts of the people of Israel. At the end of four years, Absalom said to the king, Let me go to Hebron and fulfill a vow that I made to the Lord. While your servant was living at Geshur and Aram, I made this vow. If the Lord takes me back to Jerusalem, I will worship the Lord in Hebron. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent secret messengers throughout the tribes of Israel to say, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpets, then say, Absalom is king in Hebron. Two hundred men from Jerusalem had accompanied Absalom. They had been invited as guests and went quite innocently, knowing nothing about the matter. While Absalom was offering sacrifices, he also sent for Ahithophel, the Gileonite, David's counselor, to come from Gilo, his hometown. And so the conspiracy gained strength, and Absalom's following kept on increasing. A messenger came and told David, The hearts of the people of Israel are with Absalom. Then David said to all of his officials who were with him in Jerusalem, Come, we must flee, or none of us will escape from Absalom. We must leave immediately, or he will move quickly to overtake us and bring ruin on us and put the city to the sword. The king's officials answered him, Your servants are ready to do whatever our lord the king chooses. The king then set out with his entire household following him, but he left ten concubines to take care of the palace. So the king set out, and all the people following him, and they halted at the edge of the city. All of his men marched past him, along with the Kerithites and Peleothites, and all of the six hundred Gittites, who had accompanied him from Gath, marched before the king. The king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why should you come along with us? Go back and stay with King Absalom. You're a foreigner, an exile from your homeland. You came only yesterday, and today shall I make you wander with us when I do not know where I'm going? Go back and take your people with you. May the Lord show you kindness and faithfulness. But Ittai replied to the king, As surely as the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, Wherever my lord the king may be, whether it means life or death, there will your servant be. David said to Ittai, Go ahead, march on. So Ittai the Gittite marched on with all of his men and the families that were with him. The whole countryside wept aloud as all of the people passed by. The king also crossed the Kidron Valley, and all of the people moved on toward the wilderness. Zadok was there too and all of the Levites who were with him carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. They set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar offered sacrifices until all of the people had finished leaving the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Take the Ark of God back into the city. If I have found favor in the Lord's eyes, he will bring me back and let me see it and his dwelling place again. But if he says, I'm not pleased with you, that I am ready. Let him do to me whatever seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Do you understand? Go back to the city with my blessing. Take your son Ahimaaz with you, and also Abiathar's son Jonathan. You and Abiathar return with your two sons. 
I will wait at the fords in the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar took the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they stayed there. But David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered, and he was barefoot. All of the people with him covered their heads too, and were weeping as they went. Now David had been told, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. So David prayed, Lord, turn Ahithophel's counsel into foolishness. When David arrived at the summit where people used to worship God, Hushai the archite was there to meet him. His robe was torn and dust was on his head. David said to him, If you go with me, you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, Your master, I will be your servant. I was your father's servant in the past, but now I will be your servant. Then you can help me by frustrating Ahithophel's advice. Won't the priests Zadok and Abiathar be there with you? Tell them anything you hear in the king's palace. Their two sons, Ahimez, son of Zadok, and Jonathan, son of Abiathar, are there with them. Send them to me with anything you hear. So Hushai, David's confidant, arrived in Jerusalem as Absalom was entering the city. It's a fairly long chapter involving um, the, the revelation of Absalom's conspiracy against David. Now, let me just talk briefly about Absalom, his methodology. So what he did was every day he would be at the city gate where the elders sit And when people were coming to the city of Jerusalem to talk to King David about this matter or that matter, Absalom would hear their case. And he would say, oh, I would rule in your favor if only I were in charge, but I'm not in charge. And then he would show them tremendous respect. They would try to bow down before him as the king's son and the heir apparent to the throne. But Absalom would reach out his hand, take hold of the person, you know, kiss them and Anyway, he, in this manner, he gained the hearts of the people. But essentially, what he was saying was, I could lead better than David. So this Absalom conspiracy, the person of Absalom has become a type of individual. We talk about someone with an Absalom spirit. And so someone with an Absalom spirit goes to individuals in a certain group or organization or church, and they say, your concerns, your complaints, your issues are valid. And if I were in charge, I'd do something about them. But, you know, they, it goes unsaid. The, the current leadership uh, won't see your issues as valid. The current leadership won't do anything about them. And so, you know, I could lead better than whoever. So this Absalom-type spirit is, um, is with us to this day. But this is the originator, this uh, son of David. And so he, uh, he puts this conspiracy together. He sends messengers through all Israel to meet him in Hebron, and um, David becomes aware of the plot in the fullness of time. But Absalom sends for a man named Ahithophel, who is David's chief counselor. And I just want to remind you again who this Ahithophel is. Ahithophel is the grandfather of Bathsheba and the father of a man named Elam, who was one of David's mighty men. So Ahithophel was well aware of the sin of David toward Uriah the Hittite and toward the daughter of Eliam and toward his own granddaughter. So apparently he was ripe for someone like Absalom to come along and uh, to try and overthrow David because Ahithophel immediately cast his lot with Absalom. So rather than being David's top counselor, he became Absalom's top counselor. And so David um, flees from Jerusalem All of the people flee with him. But David leaves 10 concubines behind to watch over the palace. Now, this is going to be significant in um, another chapter. But remember these 10 concubines left behind, 10 10, uh, partial wives of David. David had concerns about the Ark of the Covenant. Zadok and the other priests had taken uh, the Ark of the Covenant out with David's processional out of Jerusalem. And he said, take the ark of God back to the city. If I find favor in the Lord's eyes, he'll bring me back and let me see it and his dwelling place again. So the Lord wanted the the ark to be safe, and he was content to let the Lord judge his own case in this current situation. In verse 30, we read, David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. Now, 
He was weeping over the loss of the kingdom. Jesus would later weep on that same Mount of Olives. When you have a chance, you can look in Luke chapter 19, and it's mentioned that Jesus, uh, the son of David, wept on the Mount of Olives as well. So there's an interesting parallel there, but David was weeping uh, the loss of the kingdom, the loss of the love of his son, and the, the events as they were unfolding. So David was told about um, Ahithophel being part of the conspiracy with Absalom. And David prayed a very brief prayer. Lord, turn Ahithophel's counsel into foolishness. And then immediately the partial answer to that prayer materialized because a man named Hushai the Archite, who was also one of David's uh, top counselors, came to meet him. And David said, you go back to the city of Jerusalem and pledge allegiance to Absalom, but the Lord can use you in frustrating the advice of Hithopel against me. So Hushai, David's confidant, went to Jerusalem and, and pledged his allegiance to Absalom. So I just want to tie a bow around this um, this way. This conspiracy is ongoing. We'll pick it up in the next chapter. But this Absalom attitude of your complaints and issues are valid. If I were in charge, I'd do something about them. Therefore, I could lead better than whoever the boss, the pastor, your father, your mother, whoever. I could do it better than them. This spirit is loose among God's people today. And so we want to pray about that. Lord, we just pray that you would expose every Absalom-like individual operating in the spirit of Absalom, causing a lack of unity and causing um, uh, churches, ministries, businesses, and families to go through turmoil and loss of um relationship by using these types of approaches. Lord, uh, expose these individuals, cause them to repent, give them the grace to turn, Lord, before it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.